Hey everybody, welcome to Meeple Mentor YouTube channel and or the podcast Mentor Minutes. And today I'm with Jay. Hey, How are you doing? I'm doing good, thanks. Uh, and I'm Jared. And uh, of course, if you've been tuning in, this is a series of episodes we've been doing lately on our top 10 lists. So we're going to continue with that today, and Jay picked a new topic for us to discuss. <laughs> a very a challenging topic to say. <laughs> very tough. I uh, really... <laughs> pushed me to yeah. my limit here yeah. on... it, it was it's one of those that it sounds it sounded like such a great idea and then it was just so hard to come up with the list but uh the list is our top 10 favorite dice games where you don't actually roll the dice so now you say dice game but well, yeah games with dice any yes. game that has one or more dice yes. that aren't rolled that aren't rolled but that's a much better description <laughs> yes because because I, I hesitate to say any of these on my list would ever be considered dice games that's true that's true i i think maybe one or two might be right. dice games, but yeah but, very, uh, very few others but the point on this list is you don't roll them and i know there are some games where they're you know they're rolled maybe once and then used or something like that but mm -hmm. those aren't included in my list mine either my Okay. I have I have one that's a semi cheat, but we'll get into that as the list goes by. Okay, I'm I'm wondering about that one. <laughs> I I'm, I also have a semi cheat, but that's going to be an honorary mention, I think, and we'll okay. get into those later. But uh, oh, and today mm -hmm. we are wearing some new shirts that we got in the mail, uh, courtesy of Mister Meeple T-shirts. Um, so I've got this one. It's kind of it's got this five VP reward for pick up and deliver. Uh, wanted, dead or alive. Yep, and mine is always yellow because that's the color I always play. So true. these are awesome shirts. You definitely yeah. should check these out. And uh, thank yeah. you so much for sending them. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, I appreciate you uh, supporting the channel and uh, sending us some shirts. And so we will shout you guys out. Uh, these are awesome. I love all the different graphic designs they have. Uh, and they're very comfortable. Yeah. You know, cotton yeah. shirts to yeah, wear. Yeah, they're, they're great. The, the, the designs are awesome. They're good quality shirts. Uh, so you can't go wrong. Cool. So uh, is there anything else you want to talk about before we get into the list? No, let's get into it. Okay, then let's let's hear our number 10. Number 10. All right. So for my number 10, uh, and just to <laughs> to explain how difficult this list was, um, there were actually more of these types of games than I thought there were, but there were but how way, many have you played? There, there, yes, there were way fewer that I f I've even played or that I felt were actually good. Sure, and, and I guess I should also preface that uh, there's a lot out there, but I only made a list of games that I've played. Yeah, same here. Um, I've, I've played these. And because of that, <laughs> I feel like he and I are going to have a lot of crossover because the this category is fairly limited. Yeah, yeah. My, I, I was calling this maybe, maybe 8 out of 10. Uh, I think we're going to be pretty high. That's, that's what I think. <laughs> this is probably but, uh, out of all the lists we ever do, we'll have the highest crossover. Yes, I think we'll so. See. So. Uh, so this first one is literally because... I had to find 10. <laughs> I had nine. Oh, and, no. and and this was the game I played, but I played it as a kid, and it's Trouble. Do you remember the game yes. Trouble? You don't roll dice in this game. It has a dice popper. You pop dice. You pop the dice. So your hands oh. never <laughs> your hands never touch the dice. You pop them. <laughs> so technically, you're not, you're not rolling the dice. That's a okay? stretch. But yeah, okay. Sure, <laughs> I'll buy it. That's a stretch. They, they give, give me some like, grace on this one, right? Um, the, game, the game is not good. I'm just going to say that, and I'm going to say... <laughs> Top 10. My number 10 is terrible. <laughs> it stinks, okay? But <laughs> I played it... Oh. And it was, and I had to get ten. And there were, there was a lot. There's, a, there's some pretty cool lists on on Board Game Geek, okay. Oh, and some boy. of the games looked really good. Like there was one called Chase that looked really fun, but I hadn't played any of those. So no. I would say just about any other game on that list is better than my number ten. But it's my number ten, and that's all I'm gonna say about it. You pop the dice, then you move pawns. Uh, so the amount that the dice uh, shows, and you try to get all your pieces around the board and and what's in line or something like that. I don't even know. It's been so long, but uh, we're in trouble. Unfortunately, on this is, list, that is my number ten. Wow. Trouble. All right. I think mine are a little bit better than that. <laughs> yeah, they have to be. All right. They so my be. number 10 is a, <laughs> uh, a game that you are very familiar with. I'm sure it's a Stonemeyer game, Charterstone. There is a die in that game, but you don't roll it. I didn't know this. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, I remember playing through the campaign. Uh, you had a die. I don't remember ever rolling it. Huh. I mean, feel free to comment if I'm making a mistake there or if there's like a special ability or something. But I just don't remember ever using hmm. the die for anything in that game. But it has like the six uh, sides of the various factions that are in the game. Hmm. Um I mean, maybe other than determining yeah. a first player or something like well, that. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, well, certainly Charterstone is a really great game. Absolutely. <laughs> and better than Trouble. Yeah. I, I own, oh, yeah. I own the game. Haven't played it yet. Um, and okay. so I cannot vouch for your You're dice. making me sad again. Your dice rolling. I can't, I can't vouch for that. All but. right. Well, if I made a mistake there, feel free to call <laughs> me out because I'm sure one of us is going to make a mistake on this. But yeah. uh, from when I remember playing it, there's like no like die roll. Yeah. I mean, you have a die. But I think it's a great pick. Um, if that doesn't count because he did trouble and you pop it, then I'm going to instead substitute wingspan because you don't roll it. You put it through the dice tower. And that's, uh, okay. that's a okay. rule. You can't roll the <laughs> you, dice. You, you, okay. You okay. drop the dice. Yeah. It's still a better game than trouble. So I'm not going to even yeah. give you any. any but no either one of those, I would say, yeah. um, qualifies <laughs> if we're going to have a little more loose definition. Yeah. yeah. No shade from me on that. I'm oh just going to let you have it. So. All okay, right. Okay, great. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's my number 10. Number nine. So my number nine pick is a game composed entirely of dice, but you don't roll them at all. Mm -hmm. It's a game called Cubio, yeah. which is a abstract puzzling game, mm. uh, two players only. Uh, and you start out by putting one die in the middle and the other one, uh, then the other player puts one and everything builds out from this connectedly. Mm -hmm. And um, you basically roll dice up or down to, you know, get stronger and you can like remove other people's dice and you can make different patterns to like capture uh, people's pieces. Mm -hmm. um, th yeah, it's a cool abstract game, but the whole thing is dice. I think you have six or seven die per, or dice per player and if you're interested in checking it out i mean literally all you need is like the 12 dice and then you can play anywhere on a flat surface oh, okay. um, that's cool. but if you're looking for the instructions and the rules i don't think this has ever had a retail release of any sort but there is hmm. rules online and i decided to make a video on the channel so if you're interested to try it out it's a cool little game and there's a tutorial video right here at the yeah. meeple mentor youtube channel oh even better i haven't played this one so i'll check out that tutorial video right but i did see a lot of people mentioning this one so i'm yeah. sure it's a good game it's, it's awesome yeah good pick good pick okay so my number nine is uh one that my wife and i like to play and um this is called rubik's race uh and Although um, the, the way the game's set up is um, if you've seen those like tile puzzles where you're shifting tiles around to make patterns, yep, yep. Um, it's like that, but it has two sides. And the, the reason that I included this as dice that you don't roll is because it actually has, similar to trouble, mm -hmm. but you don't pop it, it has a square container that contains a dice with all the color faces mm -hmm. of the different like Rubik's cube colors and you shake it up and then it settles into a small pattern that matches exactly your game board pattern. Mm -hmm. And so you shake it up. Uh, it has, like I said, all these little tiny mini, mini cubes or mini dice. Um, you set it uh, next to the board so that both players can see it. And then you start working as fast as you can on this slide puzzle to try to match on your side hmm. the, the same puzzle that you're seeing the represented in, in front of you in that miniature. So it's a really, really fun little game, um, really nice. quick. And then whoever like makes that pattern first, they actually, there's like a divider in the middle of the board that they push down almost like a uh, picture battleship, yeah. but you, you push it down onto the other player's side. So it stops them from shifting any more tiles. And then that, then you check to make sure you match, and and then whoever does it first wins. It's is that a only a two player game or it's only a two player game. Mm. Yep, it's only two player, and it's called Rubik's Race, uh, and it's actually a fun little uh, game, uh, mass market game. You can f still find kind of an abstract uh, puzzle game, and yeah, and it's um, just a fun little puzzle and uh, one that's really good for kids, especially if you're trying to teach you know pattern matching and things like that. So my number nine, Rubik's Race. You know that when you were saying part of it is you slam the other, uh, you slam the middle thing. It reminds me of like if. If that were the the how you win in Battleship, oh yeah, that <laughs> so would be, funny. That would be pretty great. It's like I win, bam, <laughs> smash. fingers. <laughs> I'm gonna smash, it, smash it, and all of them die. Or yeah, whatever. that's true. That's true. I, I just imagine like an explosion. I might like that version better. To be popping honest. up. Yeah. Number eight. 
Okay, so for not my number eight, uh, this is a game where every piece you have is a dice, and the dice face uh, faces uh, represent uh, different um, soldiers and um, characters in the game. But instead of rolling the dice, you're actually flicking the dice. And the game is called Cube Quest. Um, and the way this game works is you both have, uh, you, it's a two player game, you can play four players, but traditionally two player game. Um, you each have sort of a, uh, your own personal mat uh, that has a grid on it that shows a landscape of like a kingdom. So you put the two mats together, I think it's actually three mats together, and you make this sort of rectangular grid shape. Uh, and then you have red dice, a whole set of red dice uh, with all these different, um, you know, warriors and things on the dice. Mm -hmm. And then your opponent has a blue set of dice. And you basically build sort of like a castle on your side where you put, a, there was one dice that represents the king that you put in the castle. And then what you do is you take turns flicking the dice and trying to basically knock the, their king, your opponent's king off of the board, and that's how you win. Mm. And depending on what face the dice land on, if they stay on the board, will determine whether or not those warriors are you know, killed in battle, like if it's a blank face, or if they stay where you flick them and then you can try to flick again. Mm. Uh, so fun, really fun game, fun two-player game uh, called Cube Quest, and that's my number eight. I don't know if flicking is still counting as rolling, though. Well, I mean, you know, like fl like it's dexterity flicking as opposed to take them in your hands and like throw them on the table. I mean, so, that could be your your strategy, though. Although it's specific, the rules state you you flick it. You can either flick it with uh, one finger, or you can flick it with the uh, the index finger and mm -hmm. the middle finger. So there is no rolling according to the rules. So I'm, gonna, the rules, I'm so standing by. Okay, well, the pick. That's the yes. ruling. So I it's guess. a little bit. But that's my number eight. We're, we're fudging these <laughs> rules a little bit. Just, just slightly. Ever just so slightly. <laughs> All right. So my number eight pick is a game that, uh, that I, I, I think is great, but a lot of people either haven't tried it because they heard the rule book was terrible or something like that. Um, but it's it's certainly a, a solid game. And it's First Martians Adventures on the Red Planet. Huh. And there are three die or three dice in the game, a red, yellow, and green. Um, but they're really never rolled. Instead, the uh, the mission that you choose uh, tells you um, during the setup what number like value each die is, and those correspond mm -hmm. to each of the three um, habitat areas on your you know um, the hub ha habitable unit block or whatever um, that exists on Mars. And so each one represents how the condition of them are. Like so, if it goes up too high, then um, essentially that each number or each you know pip on the die tells you how much to increase the malfunction mm -hmm. um, of each of these habitats and so you have to resolve malfunction uh, cards anytime that reaches the top so um, it's not they're they're never rolled um, and there are things that can you know uh, make the the die you know increase or decrease um, but yeah that's uh so they just use like used for environmental conditions or yes. something like that. That's Although cool. now that I'm talking about the game, um, I am remembering that there are Is three there, dice. Do you roll them? That are rolled. <laughs> you failed. I failed. <laughs> that are rolled for each of the four main actions that I totally forgot so, about. So that's only going to justify my horrible number ten choice. That's all that's going. So we're, so we can call that even. Can we just? Can we make this a wash? Can we do that? <laughs> just, just, this is a fail. This is a tough list, people. This is very, very tough. tough list. <laughs> so that's okay. I've been racking my head. We will, this. we'll move on. All right. So we'll if I on. take out First Martians, <laughs> let's just say Charterstone and Wingspan. There you go. There you go. All right. I, I like Wingspan's that. eight. We'll do it. That works. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I feel uh, terrible about that. I'm really well. That's sorry. funny because when you start thinking about them, you know, if you haven't thought about them in a while, like the only happens. thing that I thought about was like, oh yeah, it's got <clears> these three <throat> dies that just track the, uh, the malfunction and. Now that I'm like trying to explain the game, like, oh wait a minute, oh, it has these other. Right, there yeah. are other dice in this That's game. That's funny. That's funny. Oh, well, a lot of dice rolling. That so you want to move on to seven? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's getting better though. This, this list is, is going a to lot get better. of fun, guys. I got to tell you, <laughs> um, not only because of the fails, it's, it's, it only gets better from here. That's all we can say. <laughs> <sighs> all right, I apologize for first Martians. <laughs> Number seven. Okay, uh, okay, pulling it together. <clears throat> yes. My number seven pick is a uh, a game called 
Cottage Garden. Mm. This is a tile placement game with only one die in the whole game, and it is only used to track the rounds. So yeah. it starts at one, and then you play a round, it goes around the board, and goes to two, goes around the board, goes to three, never rolled. All right. So, yes. yeah, in, I this, concur. in this game, there's this uh, <laughs> trail of tiles that are outside of the, the map or whatever, the grid. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the, the grid starts out full at the beginning of the game. And then wherever the die is when it's moved, because it's moved at the end of everyone's turn, mm -hmm. um, you can select any of the four uh, tiles that are in that uh, section and then put it on your one of your two garden um, plots. Mm -hmm. um, you've got always two to work with and i think they're like seven by seven or something like something that. like that yeah yeah and uh so if you reveal uh or if you leave open the pots that are shown then those are worth points uh as well as the crochets or cloches or whatever they are yeah, I don't know this little some glass thing where yeah, plants go in. yeah but those are worth a little bit more because <clears throat> they're harder to uh they're less yeah, they're uh, just harder to find. Yeah, something. Yeah, they're they're like. Are they like the smaller, like single tile or something? Like yeah, there's that? like one or two per. Yeah, I can't. Per okay, it's been plot. a while since I played this one. Um, plus, there's <clears throat> cat tokens that you can use to like fill yes. in empty spaces. Yep. And, but yep. otherwise, you're trying to cover the whole board. And then when you do, you score it. Um, and you play, you know, until I think five or six rounds, uh, depending mm. on player count. So, um, it's a really cool tile laying game, and um. It totally qualifies for this it list. It totally qualifies. Absolutely. So I'm sticking with it. <laughs> Cottage Garden. All right. So my number seven is Cottage Garden. No. <laughs> yes. No. It's exactly my number seven. <laughs> for, for the same reason you said. <laughs> uh, so we actually, the, our first crossover, surprisingly, but. And it's um, the same number. And it's the same number too, which has never happened to us yet. Nope. Um, yeah. Everything you said, um, it's the same thing. It's, you know, polyomino. Uh, style game. This is. Um, he was just biding his time over there. Yeah, I was. I was. Biting I was his lip. totally. Yeah, pretending I didn't know this one. Um, was this? This is Uwe Rosenberg, I think, and th yeah. this is um, in a series of three games. This is like right like, after Patchwork. Yeah, the, Cottage the Garden, game. Spring Meadow, and there's one I always forget. Indian. Summer. Indian Summer. That's it. Yeah. So, um, and I think they're all tile placement games. But mm -hmm. yeah, like you said, it has one dice just used for a round counter, mm -hmm. um, and it also is used, as you said, as it moves around the board to. Uh, give you to show you what options you have for tile. Uh, that, for that's a great tiles. game that shows you that die or dice mm. can be very functional yeah. without having to be rolled. Yeah, yeah. So great, great pick and uh, my number seven as well. Cool. Cottage Garden. Number six. You remember that I said one of these games is a little bit of a cheat and that wasn't that the wasn't trouble. That wasn't trouble. <laughs> oh. So you're you're taking a mulligan <laughs> on something here? So yeah, this is this is going to be, and it's higher on my list just because I like the game better. Um, this is from a series of games called Pack O Games, and these are games that are literally the size of like a pack of gum, uh, and inside they contain these like long rectangular cards uh, mm -hmm. that are basically the size of a stick of gum. Uh, and um, this particular game is called Lie, and you're probably wondering, well, what do you? This is a nice list. Well, Lie is a version of Liar's Dice with cards, and the cards have pictures of the dice on them. So all the different cards have two dice faces on them. Can I stop you right there? I don't, I, I'm afraid of what you're gonna ask me. <laughs> I don't wanna stop. <laughs> is there an actual die there, in the game? There are images of oh. dice in the game <laughs> that are never rolled so that's Whoa. my that's my cheat that's my this was the this was the tough list jared this was hey the you list. came up with the list i did and i, I regretting it ever since <laughs> i don't think anyone else in the comments can come up with a t top 10. <laughs> no this is bad this i is mean bad. we failed already but but listen lie is a great little game <clears throat> um if you like liar's dice but you're looking for a version that you can like put in your pocket, take with you to a restaurant, it, it's not loud because you're not actually shaking up dice. What you're doing is you're putting all these it's dice. It's a card game. Yeah, you're putting all these cards in a pile. It's only cards. And you're, you're swirling, <laughs> them, swirling them around. And then you're choosing randomly, you know, a hand of these cards. And each card has a die face. And then you're going to choose which dies to, you know, to, to play during the game, just like you would have Liar's Dice. Uh, so, yes, there's no dice rolling. There are pictures of dice, but there are no physical dice, which is why that's my cheat. So uh, that is my number six, lie. 
Wow. Pretty appropriate title for the game. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Considering the list, I would say that's that game is a lie when it comes to whether or not it's a dice, <laughs> has a dice or die. Yeah, no. This, this list is not, this list is tanking. It's totally <laughs> tanking. All right. What do you got for number six? <clears throat> number six. Legit pick, <laughs> Legit. right? Okay. All right, this game is a, a, a wonderful game set in the King Arthur legend, um, and it's uh, probably one of the earlier co-op games, especially ones that had a traitor. It's called Shadows Over Camelot. Uh, in this game, players are working together to uh, lay cards out over various different battle territories uh, to either gain legendary items like the Holy Grail and Excalibur and, and things like that, uh, but also to fight off the evil. And so any of these things that players can accomplish together uh, will earn them uh, like place, uh, the ability to place white swords across the round table. And basically once uh, players have gotten more than half of the round table mm -hmm. full of white uh, swords, they win. Otherwise, if enough black swords come out and, you know, basically they fail various territories, then the evil wins. Um, it does have dice and it does because each player uh, has a die in their color that is only used during the game to track their health. Mm -hmm. um, players start at, I think, like three or four health, and yeah. then you can, <clears throat> um, you know, basically you can get knocked out and die. And you can also, you know, spend a health, um, just flipping it back um, one, to uh, take an extra action on mm -hmm. your turn. Um, yeah, so it's a great <clears throat> game that has dice in it, um, but you don't ever roll them. So yep. Shadows Over Camelot, that's my number six. Number five. So my number five pick is a sort of a small box game about books. Uh, and it's called Biblios. It involves uh, different dice that are used to track the power of uh, the, I think the five various four or five suits of cards, yep. suits, of cards suits of cards that are uh, <clears throat> earned and collected during the game. And um, you know, when you kind of score the end, that's the points you get for those cards that you've collected. Um, it's a really cool, uh, solid game. Did it ever receive any expansions? I don't know. I know there's multiple versions of yeah. it um, like in several different forms. reprints. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know if it ever had an experience. And it's it's just a solid game overall. Um, and if you're interested in sort of that, um, you know, kind of collection and uh, hidden information type of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And I would include it on a lot of lists. Uh, mm. But for this time, because the dice aren't, aren't used to be rolled, uh, it qualifies to be on my list. So yeah. that is my pick for my number five. Yeah, that's a great pick. And I think this is one that is one of the more recognizable games sure. uh, that have dice that aren't used. That, and I saw this on a lot of BGG lists as well. So yeah, well, uh, it's a good pick. It's I mean, a great pick. Yeah, great, great game. It's a great game. It's a lot of fun. <clears throat> I agree. So what's what's your number? Uh, what's your number five? <laughs> so uh, my I'm number always, five. I'm already worried. Yeah, my number five is the same as your number six, and that is Shadows Over Camelot. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is another crossover. Um, everything you just said. Um, every every you're each playing a different knight, and the dice is just representing your health. Oh. Um, and it also is uh, like I said. I really like the um, concept of you. You only get one action. But if you exert yourself um, by spending a, a health point, uh, you get a second action. And w in a cooperative game like this, um, that can really be a key factor to winning the game. Uh, and in fact, this is a game where uh, you don't all have to survive to win. As long as you win the game and there's still one knight alive, um, then you can still all win the game collectively. So there are even uh, uh, instances, um, and I think it's so dramatic when this happens where you would actually give up your very last life point to complete one of the actions. Uh, you're then out of the game permanently, but you've sacrificed for the other knights. And then, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully, hopefully you win. Hopefully that leads to a win. Hopefully yeah. it leads to a win. But um, yeah, Shadow over, Shadows over Camelot, um, one of my favorite designers, Bruno Cathala. And uh, I love this game. So that is uh, my number five. Can't argue that. I agree. <laughs> totally. We do. We both agree. <laughs> Number four. <clears throat> okay, for my number four, um, I picked a, a war game, and uh, well, no, no, it's it's a war, you know, combat dudes on a map type type game. Hmm. Um, war game like Risk, but like, no dice rolling. Like it's no, it's Kemet actually. Really? Uh, and Kemet has, although the game doesn't call them dice, 
they're actually four-sided dice um, in the game, mm -hmm. and they re they represent pyramids uh, in the game. It's a it's a game that's like a war the game. Strength of pyramids. That's right. Yeah, right. The, it's a war game that's set in Egypt uh, with a lot of mythological uh, gods and powers and things like that. And so you each will get a pyramid or a four-sided die. And um, based on the strength of your pyramid, it lets you draft cards that are like higher abilities and lets you do you know different things and, and uh, different actions. Um, so you never roll these dice, um, but you can level them up. Uh, they just sit on the board. They represent pyramids, and they're huge. And they're so they're really they're very cool pieces, and they're mm -hmm. a lot bigger than your standard you know D four. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, a lot a great game. One of my favorite sort of war style games. Uh, and um, and one of the ones that has dice that you never roll. So that's why it's my number four, uh, Kemet, or Kemet, however it's pronounced. I think it's Kemet. It works for me. And it also has an expansion, and it was reprinted recently. And yeah, it has. I think it has a couple expansions. One is um, Blood and Set. Or, yeah, and, th and then just, they did a new release um, that I think combines some of the expansions and a, and a new like 2.0 rule set. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if... People have gotten that um, that backed it if it's been delivered yet. But uh, I do like the miniatures in this game. Miniatures are yeah, really cool miniatures, especially for a lot of like you have these you know really like large creatures, creatures and, and things. Um, and that's a lot of fun to you know see out there on the board with all these little like soldiers. Cool. So great yeah. pick. Yeah, good game. So my number four is a uh, a game that was backed on Kickstarter. Um, it's pretty popular. It's usually played either solo <clears throat> or two player. Um, and it's an exploration game using cards, and it's called Seventh Continent. Uh, in this game, uh, you'll basically be working as a team to explore and uncover things. Um, and you choose what you you know what you want to do on the card. You flip it over to resolve certain things. Uh, you can explore new areas and slowly get out. You have to collect a lot of different items um, to solve certain puzzles. Um, in the game, there are dice, but they're only used on your item cards mm -hmm. uh, to track the number of uses that you have or how many, you know, like fish or meat or, um, you know, weapon use that you have. Yeah. Um, so that's basically the only use for those dice. And, um, and there's really the whole game is just um, uh, square cards uh, mm. plus maybe the four miniatures for your characters um, plus the, uh, the little fire token. Yes, yeah, that's like right. you can that's build right. a campsite kind of thing. <clears throat> yeah, um, but yeah, it's a it's a great game and one that I've played for many hours. And then you know, at that point, I was like, I kind of don't want to play anymore. So I tried. <laughs> it's a very it. long game. <laughs> it is. Uh, I think, yep. but once you've played it a bunch, you're just kind of like worn out. Um, just, but it's great. If you haven't played it, you definitely should. Yeah. Um, and it's it's on my list because it has a lot of dice that are just never never ever rolled. Yeah, and there's a there's a sequel to this that I uh, read about called the Seventh Citadel, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I know a lot of people back that game uh, or were in the process of backing it. So yeah, I'm not sure if that's come out. Yeah, yet. yeah. at least uh, you know at least for the recording that we were doing in yeah. January. <clears throat> that's true. That's true. 2021. Yeah, sure. if you're watching this in the future, <laughs> you could probably tell us all about it in the that's comments. That's right. That's right. Good pick. Good pick. Thanks. Number three. Moving on to number three. Uh, so this pick is one that is also going to be a crossover uh, because he's already mentioned it. And it's another war game where there's miniatures and <laughs> pyramid dice. It's called yeah. Kemet. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> and uh, basically everything that he said makes this an awesome game. Like it's uh, you can actually um, no matter like the spaces, the like you would normally look at a board like this in a war game and think, oh, I'm like six or seven spaces mm -hmm. away from everybody. But <laughs> they've they've really mapped out these obelisks all over the map. And when you, you know, your, your pyramids give you this power as well to mm -hmm. move, mm -hmm. um, like, you know, immediately, uh, like transportation. What do you yeah, call it? It's, it's like beaming up. Or yeah. Something. Like beaming up, <clears throat> which is kind of sci-fi for a like ancient yeah. Egypt theme. Yeah. But that's a really cool part because what, what makes this different than other war games is that the map is actually only, you're only ever two spaces away from anybody. Yeah, um, very, and it, yeah. you just, you know, because people can warp around the, the map so quickly, um, there's just a lot more conflict, a lot mm -hmm. quicker. Mm -hmm. Um, and so because of that, you don't have a whole lot of time to really build up defenses because any player can really come at you rather quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, if they see that, you know, you're, you're trying to build up something and they'll try to stop you. Um, so I think that's what makes this really interesting and really cool and plays pretty fast pace. 
Um, and yeah. even if you don't like war games, you know, I think you'll enjoy this because of how quickly it, it works and it's just more tactical yeah. uh, than, the, than <clears throat> it is strategic. Yeah. Yeah. No, great pick. And I forgot one thing and you reminded me that, but uh, the way the game also, like you said, encourages, it encourages combat. So there's really not a lot of turtling in because you are so close to everybody yeah. um, too. So it's, it's that, that way it's one of those games where even if you're, you're battling, uh, nobody's getting their feelings hurt. So it's a really cool design. Yeah, it's an expected part of the game. I yeah. mean, you, you have to like earn so many uh, uh, victory points by mainly doing battle and yeah, winning. Yeah, battles so. and some Elder to Air Control. Right, too, there's a few things, but yeah, battle's yeah. a big part of it. Oh, so is that three crossovers now? Maybe, yeah. I think, okay, okay. But, so, so less than I it. thought, but we still have a few to go. <laughs> so, so we're on number three huh yeah so, so what's your number three my number three is a crossover oh uh, and it's biblios um, there it is yeah this, I, I knew this was yeah be you knew uh, this has been on other lists of mine too i think um and uh yeah it's one of my favorite card games i mean he um, talks about it a lot yeah i love this game um it plays uh great at all player counts um you know it's it's uh very strategic at two but it plays well um you know three to four um, and maybe up to five. I, I got to remember that. Um, but um, yeah, it's the first game I'd ever played really that had this uh, mechanism in it where I, you know, open the box, there's five dice in the box and yet you never roll them. Um, and I think my favorite part of the game is that some of the cards let you manipulate those dice. So if you really think that you're losing in a certain suit, uh, since you're trying to collect the most, you know, cards in those suits, um, there are cards that can really let you, you know, uh, adjust the, the face of one of the dies. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, when you do that, it just means that your opponent is going to get less points, even if they end up having more cards than you in that suit by the end of the game. So a lot of cool ways to think about it. It's got a, you know, two part sort of uh, two phase part of the game, similar to uh, like for sale, which I, I mentioned, um, where they're really distinct phases. And um, to me, you can't go wrong with Biblios. So my number three. Cool. And that's a perfect kind of game to have a crossover on. Because I feel like when I think about games that have dice that you don't roll, Biblios is certainly it's one of the, the ones. the first one I think about. Yeah, like th mm -hmm. that's, that's always the first. Yeah. So, yeah. Not surprised there. Number two. So my number two is yet another crossover. Here it and is. And it's what? the Seventh Continent. Oh. Yeah. Um, I love this game. I, yeah. I still have this game. Um, looking forward. I'm actually getting a game table this year. And I'm looking forward to actually having it set up on the game table. Uh, and then I can put the topper over to yeah. kind of like keep it set up because there is kind of a lot of packing and unpacking when it comes to this game. Um, but there is a safe system. There is a safe system, which is actually really well designed. Mm -hmm. um, but if you just want to kind of, you know, play it for a little while and, and keep everything set up, you know, having a game table lets you do that. Um, but yeah, really like this game. Um, I, I opted in when I did the Kickstarter for these bone dice. I don't mm -hmm. know if you had those. But I they're don't. they look like you know pieces of bone that that are shaped like cubes, um, cool. and they just kind of add a little bit of flavor. But um, yeah, you just basically they keep track of your items and uh, how many uses you have, and um, you know this is a great sort of ex exploration type choose your own adventure game, uh, which is uh, highly regarded. So that's why it made my number two. Very cool, very cool. Another great game to have as a crossover. Yes. Uh, so my number two is a game that has not been uh, discussed yet, uh, and it's a, um, a very popular Euro game um, about building a pyramid. It's called Teotihuacan, City of the Gods. Um, this one, when it hit, I mean, it was everybody was playing this yeah. game. It was the hotness forever, and it's still heavily played, mm -hmm. and it's sort of the one of the earlier ones that it came right uh, as far as these, the T game, um, you know, yeah, see yeah. that we, we've mm -hmm. seen so many come out since then, but it started with Zulkin and then Teotihuacan. Um, and then after that, we've had Tekinu and Tawant and Suyu, and there's more coming yeah, on the way. Several others, yeah. So, uh, but the, in this <clears> game, um, it's a very euro -y game. So you're, uh, you have these power uh, die workers and wherever you move, um, you have to go in a clockwise order, um, but you can go a number of spaces and wherever you land, you can do one of two things, either the main action or, or do the worship thing. Um, and then usually uh, you get to power up the die or mm -hmm. one of the die that you used in that um, 
uh, action. And so, again, you don't ever roll these dice. They only keep track of how powerful or strong these dice are. And then mm-hmm. after they go from six to one, you know, it triggers certain uh, eclipse movement uh, mm-hmm. on the on the board. And, um, you know, it's called ascension. But yeah, yeah. Re- basically represents kind of your your workers dying and then be reincarnating yeah. or something like that. So there's a yeah. lot of cool like themes going on in this game. Mm. And there's a lot of uh, just thinkiness to it because mm. every like section of the board that has them, they, they, these different actions uh, are all ways that give you points. It's just a matter of how well you do it. And uh, can you get all of your dice there? Because you can only move one die in your turn. But if you can get to where multiples of your dice are, generally you're getting strong, mm. stronger mm. actions. Um, so it's, uh, it's an awesome game. Mm. If you haven't played it, I definitely recommend it. Um, Teotihuacan with dice and the don't roll. That's right. Great pick. Honorable mentions. So before we get into our number one picks for games that have dice that are never rolled, we wanted to first talk about some honorary mentions. Yes. And he says he has a couple. I have, I have two. Um, so who knows? We'll maybe see some more crossovers that may be part of the list or maybe these, yeah. I, of course, maybe I, I'm suspecting, I guess, yeah, he's going to break the rules in these honorary <laughs> I, I actually will. And that's why they made their honorable mentions. I see. Yeah. All right. Um, so the first one I had on my list, um, Let's is, hear it. is a game called Sagrada, which yes. is a really uh, popular game with a lot of dice and a lot of dice and they are rolled and a lot of rolls. But the way that it works is one person is rolling the dice and then everybody on their turn is just doing dice drafting. They're picking the dice. So on, so if you're playing a four-player game, you're not rolling dice every single turn or every single round. Only one person is. Uh, but because the dice are rolled, I did not include it in my regular list. Um, this one sort of dances that edge of, I guess if we had a list of like, you don't roll dice every turn, we could probably find a lot more maybe. Um, yeah. so, so it was an honorable mention only because... The rolling is a very sort of insignificant part of the game, and not everybody r- rolls the dice. So. It's more of a round setup phase. Yeah, it's more of a f- setup phase, but I didn't include it because it super it kind of breaks the rules. Super broke the rules. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Uh, so one honorary mention, I uh, will put Magic: The Gathering, uh, which is a card game, but uh, is yeah. often uh, combined with lots of dice because, first <clears throat> of all, you've got a twenty point health. Mm. Uh, you know measure and so usually every time we play magic everyone had their 20 sided die that keeps track of their health yeah also a lot of cards have special abilities that have either timers or can be tracked like how many um tokens or how many uh, enemies and things like that or the strength of a new enemy Mm -hmm. so dice are Mm -hmm. used in a lot of different ways um but they're never rolled and again it's a card game but it's also uh, a lot, uh, most of the time, dice is is used with this game, and yeah. and since you can technically play this without dice, um, that's why I'm not. This didn't make my list, yeah. but it's often played with at least a twenty sided die. Yeah, I, I uh, read a lot of things about that too, because I think there's a lot of times that for certain games we'll use dice to like do as round counters or as as health and all that stuff. So um, yeah, I thought about actually putting this on my list, but I haven't played Magic so. That's, I'm just going to leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, I think we've already discussed this on a prior We've discussed it. You, you have my gamer card, so. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I take it every single episode. You do, pretty much, pretty much. Um, so my uh, other one uh, is um, a game that I actually talked about on our last top 10 list, and that is uh, The Adventures Temple of Chalk. And um, very similar to Sagrada, um, there are dice in this game. One person rolls the dice uh, at the beginning of a round, uh, to determine how many action points you have, like how many act, uh, movement points you have or action points. And then everybody has to adjust um, and, and use a certain amount of those action points. So, you know, if you're playing a five player game, you're only going to roll those dice once every five turns. Uh, but because it broke the rule, um, I didn't include it. Uh, so it would fall into that other top 10 list that we're probably never going to do after this one. <laughs> Next time is, you pick a top yeah, 10, make sure it's it, something that you can actually do without breaking the rules. I probably should have checked first. Pick. You know, I probably should have checked first. <laughs> uh, but uh, but it was a fun list nonetheless. It uh, is fun. <laughs> so Adventures Temple of Shock is, is right. skirting the line quite heavily. 
heavily. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so my last honorary pick that I wanted to mention is a game that also qualifies but breaks the rules slightly in the same way that Trouble breaks the rules. Okay. It's a game called Camel Up because you don't actually oh, yeah. roll yeah. dice. You put them in a pyramid and you shake the pyramid. Uh, you, you know, I, this would have been on my list if I had remembered that. Yep. It totally and then you been drop on my list. it and you just pick <laughs> it up and the dice are never actually rolled. That's right. You, you, you're you actually just shaking the you're dice. You're shaking it in a, a little contraption. And then, and then, and you're then right. one is selected. Then one is selected. You're, yeah. you're not, you don't even have to drop the dice. You can just no, put, put no, it no, on No, no, you put it on the thing and then you lift it up. Oh, this is, this would have made my list. I'm sure it would. Okay, this I'm surprised it didn't. This replaces lie. <laughs> <laughs> He's stealing. He's stealing. Yeah, I'm stealing. I, and this is one of my favorite racing games. I cannot I believe, can't believe I you didn't forgot put it, this Because this one. game is awesome. I love this game. I love this game. So, oh, what a great pick. What a great pick. <laughs> Um, well, I guess it, it's going to replace my uh, first Martians. Let's there you go. That. Okay, so we're, we'll, we'll be even there, too. Um, and then my last one was... Um, very similar to that, but this is this to me skirts the line way more because it's an exclusive dice game and it's called Strike. Now, here's 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 how I get around this. You're actually let's hear this. You're throwing dice into an arena, throwing throwing yes dice into arena and trying to you know knock other people's dice out, uh, and if they happen to land on a specific side then you know you can retain your gladiators so you're not really rolling them traditionally you're throwing Flicking, them into a throwing bowl. popping yeah <laughs> not rolling the dice yeah this one i totally agree that this is a total cheat uh but i just thought it was it was funny so i mentioned it see the f thing is your honorary mentions all break the rules they pretty do. blatantly they do my honorable mentions much. don't yeah the only thing i'll say about magic though is it definitely in the rules doesn't say anything about dice does it or, no 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 okay so at least that's almost breaking the rules like it's a house rule i mean then again i haven't read an actual rule book of any kind to magic and that's, that's probably who, true who knows how yeah, many years there's probably some variant that definitely uses i dice. mean it, I unless are. it says I we recommend you keep track of your health with a die I mean, yeah they, I, I bet you it probably, unless it says something like it that it probably does too, but it, so. I mean, anyway i can't believe so, this this was a fun list can you Wasn't tell it? <laughs> I hope so, you're having fun because yes, we are. <laughs> yeah, so on to our number ones then. Yeah, let's talk about okay, it. Okay, here we go. Number one. So my number one pick is actually the game that I thought of first and then Biblio. So for me, this is one of my not favorite games, but definitely like top 20, top 30 games. Um, it's a heavy Euro with some amazing art. I don't think Jay has had a, a chance to play this yet. Mm. Um, and it's called Feudum. And this game, ah. everybody has three pawns, which are their characters. And before you start, you get to place one on the board and you select one of the six guilds to be part of. And so huh. in this game, because the dice only signify the guild that that character is associated with, it's never rolled. Mm. And uh, as you play the game, you can add more pawns or remove pawns. And every time you put a new one on the board, you just select a new guild that you want to be associated with. Mm. Um, and so because of that, this was clearly my, it was always going to be my number one pick because it's a fantastic game. Uh, it is heavy. I will warn you. I mean, I think the first time I was taught this, there was like, we had two simultaneous games going on and like a full six, six. Mm -hmm. I mean, and there were so many questions that the rules took hours Oof. just to do the rules. Wow. But um, after playing it and reading the rules myself, I was able to teach the game in a later session with a group of five and we finished the tutorial in under an hour. So, hmm. you know, it can be done. I, I would say don't be discouraged on, you know, all the, the rumors or the, the the stories you might have heard of how complex it is. Yeah, um, that's what I've heard. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. It's really cool. It's got a lot of unique mm -hmm. mechanisms, and I feel like the, the like the criticism people give this is that it's like overproduced. It's like they mm -hmm. threw so much into this. It's kind of its own world, and there's like so much you have to like know to be able to uh, you know come up with a good strategy of winning. But I have a good mm -hmm. time every time I play this. And it just looks gorgeous on the on the table. Um, so that's my number one pick. Hmm. Feudum with dice that are never rolled. Ah, very cool. Yeah, I, I had no idea about this game. Of course. Um, and I'm surprised too because a lot of the lists I saw 
I don't think I even saw them mentioning this one. So right. that's a good call. Thank good you. call. Thank you. Okay. Um, my number one is a crossover. And um, this is definitely my favorite game on this list. And it's uh, Tear to Walken. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For all the, all, again, the same reasons you said. Um, it's a dice worker placement game. Um, has a rondelle, you know, but you're using three dice or, or more at, at the same time. And just choosing which dice you want to move. Um, this game has a lot. Of things going on, you know, a lot of sort of uh, inter uh, intertwining mechanisms, and as well as just a lot of different ways to get points. Um, but it's a, one of those games that's a, it's more like medium heavy. But it actually, once you play it, it's really intuitive. Um, there's just um, you know some uh, housekeeping that you gotta have to remember. Um, but yeah, one of my favorite in the tea games. I think this one slightly edges out Zolkin for me. Um, and this is, this was uh, after Biblios was the, the one I always think about. Uh, and it's definitely, it, I think this game's in my top 10. Um, so Teotihuacan, uh, my number one. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a wonderful game. Um, I'm not surprised that, you know, you also picked that and that it was number one for you. That's yeah. That's awesome. and, and I've not played Takenu mm -hmm. and I know it has dice, but I could, I didn't know if you roll them or not. Yeah, you so, do. okay. So, so you do. So you've confirmed that mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you do. We, we survived the list. I think we made it. <laughs> Somehow we survived Picking this list. and screaming, we made it. <laughs> yeah. So. so if that's the kind of game you're looking for, then, you know, look at all of these uh, games mentioned. Maybe less of his because his are breaking Wait, the rules. Yeah, only a few. Only, only a, a few. couple. I, it's a, by, by a little bit. That's all. Just, just slightly. <laughs> and, and for the ones where I broke the rules, just refer to my honorable mentions and you'll be fine. <laughs> there you go. It's it's just it's just fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you have, I was going to say they have to let us know if... <laughs> how much they enjoyed this list over because we can start thinking of really horrible topics like this that we can just f muddle through yeah like you crazy know? weird like for, topics. The, for the entertainment value that, just that's, for the that's all it's going to be about <laughs> i don't know but either way if you have serious picks or comedic picks for stuff you want us to talk about please let us know uh certainly a comment on the video or send me an email um meeplementor at gmail.com uh, we we uh, publish this to various podcast servers mm -hmm. like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Spotify, etc. Mm -hmm. um, basically, anywhere that you can listen to a podcast, we're there. And, you know, it's a lot of fun. So, yeah. So uh, if, I hope you enjoyed listening and, uh, you know, check us, check the video out on YouTube to see how embarrassed we look when our picks oh, yeah. are wrong. If you're only <laughs> listening on the podcast, I would recommend this be the one you check out on yes. video because some of the reactions and uh, faces that yeah, we had to I our agree. We're a little, little bit picks. more animated this time. This one, um, man. Wow. <laughs> wow. And we should also mention uh, that we're part of the Gateway Network. Absolutely. As well. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, what is the, the Gateway Network, Jay? Oh, see, now I'm on the spot. So um, the Gateway Network um, was formed by uh, the Gamecasters and um, Ryan, Jeff, and Natalie. And uh, what they've done is they've uh, come to different content creators, um, some of which are a little lesser num known, some of which are, are more popular, and um, really formed a network where we can all shout each other out. Um, you know, highlight different content creators and uh, different fields and um, just uh, a lot of really, really um, talented people who are talking about their love of games in really new and unique ways. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the Gateway Network and uh, check them out. Are they all YouTubers? They're not all YouTubers. Some of them are podcasts, uh, YouTubers, Instagram, um, well, I'm probably forgetting something. Uh, Websites. Comedy channels. Yeah. I mean, different things, but um, a lot of variety. So, right. uh, yeah, highly recommend you check out all the content uh, creators uh, on through the Gateway Network. Yep. So there, uh, that's thegatewaynetwork.com. Um, and also on Instagram, yes. the, the Gateway Network. <clears throat> That's right. And we are doing a um, bad, was it bad board game covers? Who's also on, on the network is uh, mm. is hosting a a fun little uh, cover competition where uh, there's 16 of us all from the Gateway Network. We're all on Instagram trying to pick uh, box covers uh, to compete against, you know, the brackets here. Um, and each <laughs> round is like a different topic. That's right. So it's not just like one cover all the way through. Mm -hmm. um, like, but the first <clears throat> round was just best overall board game cover. Cover. And I passed that one. Uh, okay. I got to I got to round two. Okay. Um, today mine's being voted, so we'll have to figure out you know later if it won or not. But this the second round topic uh, was best game that has um, or or the best table presence. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. that's cool. Yeah. And that's just for the box covers. 
No, no. Oh, it's just this is for the game itself. Yeah, okay. so this one is just the Got game it. with the best table presence. No, but his his Instagram is Bad Board Game Covers. Okay, so awesome. If you want to check that out and vote, certainly head over there. It's just just for fun. Yeah, sounds cool. And uh, oh, I do want to announce again that uh, very soon in February, mm. uh, through the Gateway Network, um, they are actually putting together their own awards. Mm. And we've um, about fifty people, including myself, all um, voted on and suggested on all the different categories that we wanted to, you know, have uh, games voted for. Uh, we're calling this award uh, the awards the Insties. We've got a cool logo to it, um, and you can see that on the video uh, if you're watching on YouTube, and check it out on Instagram. But uh, you're gonna hear more about it because it's gonna also be, um, like we've got the categories, we've got the nominees, because mm -hmm. um, not only did we come up with categories, we had to include nominees. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not gonna be us picking the winners. Um, we're gonna actually put this out uh, amongst as much mediums as we can, starting with mm -hmm. Instagram, um, to count up the votes and see, you know, see who wins which each category. Win. And then hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll acknowledge those with the, the seal of the Insties, uh, like special award. Uh, we'll try to contact the publisher, just let them know in case hmm. they want to, you know, put share that or put a stamp on the yeah, box, cool. whatever they want to do. Yeah. Um, who knows? It'll be a lot of fun. I think it's a great idea. Um, and uh, yeah, look forward yeah, to that check, check coming it out. soon. Um, also, we're also going to be doing uh, some unboxings. We're ha uh, we've done Canvas, uh, Monster Slaughter, Underground, and Cloud Age is coming. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for some of those. Lost Ruins of Arnax coming. A um, yeah. lot of tutorials I'm working on at the moment, um, but I've got a vacation coming You're up. You're a busy guy. <laughs> I'm super busy. I don't even know. You need a vacation. I need a vacation. So I'm <laughs> taking a vacation uh, after filming this here in a couple days. So, you know. Yeah. So look for the content while you're away. And yeah. uh, I guess until next time, I've been Jay. And I've been Jared. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>